All right, so in this video, I'm gonna make the inverter and controller, this Hyper 9 uh, SME X1 inverter and controller to the chill plate. That's an optional accessory for this inverter. Uh, and put some gasket maker on the outside of the chill plate to make sure there's a good, a good seal, make sure there's no leak uh, with the coolant flowing through this chill plate. What you're gonna need is, of course, the inverter and chill plate and then whatever mounting hardware you're using. What I used is these uh, M6 machine screws. Um, make sure they're longer than uh, this and this stacked on top of each other because you'll need room to put the nut on. Um, your sealant or gasket maker, I'm using Permatrex uh, Ultra Black Gasket Maker. You'll want some 400 grit sandpaper, um, some paper towels, for the brake cleaner um, and then whatever you use to tighten down your mounting hardware in my case I need a screwdriver and I need a uh, wrench so you'll need to sand the two sides um, that are going to be connected to each other so that's the back of the inverter and the side of the chill plate which the coolant runs through so once you're done sanding what you want to do is grab some paper towels um, just rub off all the sanded off aluminum that you took off of each surface. And then once you're done with that, grab some of your brake cleaner. and just spray it on each surface. You'll want to use quite a bit because you want these surfaces to be very clean so that the uh, seal lasts as long as possible. Now that both surfaces are fully sanded, you want to grab your uh, sealant product, whatever you're using. Go ahead and open that up. And then you just want to create a, a small, um, thin line around the entire perimeter uh, of the chill plate. Once you're done spreading the sealant around the edge of your chill plate, you want to make sure that your two inlet and outlet uh, ports are facing the way that you want them to uh, before you put it down. So for my use case, I want these facing up towards the top, towards the top of the controller. So I'm going to put it down this way. Um, now what you want to do is grab all of your mounting hardware and thread that in. Once you've got them all um, hand tightened loosely, you want to tighten them down the same way that you um, would tighten like a wheel in a star pattern where you go one side and then the other side. Uh, and gradually tighten them. <clears throat> all right, so once you have them all tightened down, um, you can see there's quite a bit of excess uh, sealant around the edges. So just grab a paper towel and just wipe all the excess off before it dries. Once you've wiped away all the excess, you're pretty much done. Um, one thing you have to remember is that you will, of course, have to remove these bolts when you mount this. Uh, so you need at least 24 hours of curing time for the, uh, the sealant. So you want to keep these in for at least 24 hours before you take them out to mount. Uh, the inverter and chill plate, wherever you're going to put them. Now that the connection between the chill plate and the inverter has uh, been curing for about a day now, I'm ready to screw in these NPT coolant fittings for this chill plate. So these are eighth inch uh, NPT fittings on the chill plate side, and these are three eighths inch barbs. 
So before you uh, put them in, you want to get a little bit of thread, uh, thread sealant to make sure that the joint doesn't leak at all. Uh, just put a tiny bit of that on like that. You can use your finger to spread it out just to get a complete seal. So when you're tightening down these uh, fittings, you want to make sure that you don't tighten them too much uh, because this, these are brass and brass is very brittle. Uh, it snaps very easily, which is what happened with this first first chill plate. So I snapped off one of these. I used Teflon tape instead of uh, more liquid uh, thread sealant. And that, I guess, interfered with the tolerances enough to make it very difficult to torque down properly. And one of these snapped while I was installing it. So I had to pry this chill plate off because the uh, gasket maker had already cured. I had to pry this chill plate off of the inverter uh, and buy a new one because this this broken off brass fitting is not going to come out of there easily. So I attached these coolant hoses onto the uh, inverter and now I'm ready to mount this inverter in the car. Uh, so what I need to do to mount it is I need to back out, I need to take out all these uh, screws, all four of them. Um, and then the only thing that will be holding it together while I mount it is the gasket maker, but the gasket maker is very strong, it makes a very uh, solid connection. Alright, so now I've got the inverter bolted on to the mount that I showed uh, in an earlier video. I'm ready to set up the three uh, AC runs from the inverter to the motor. Um, so on the inverter side, let's see if it focuses, the bolts, the terminal bolts are 5 16 inch. Uh, but on the in motor side, they're 3 8 inch. So I had to buy a new set I wasn't expecting. Uh, them to be different, but uh, just keep that in mind. So you do want to keep the length of each of the runs almost the same, as close to the same as possible, uh, in order to minimize the differences in resistance because of the wires. Uh, and differences in resistance could cause problems, so you want them to be about the same length. So the way I've been crimping the wires, uh, the the lugs to the wires, the two odd wires, is with something called a hammer crimper, which is what this is. So you hit it on the top here with a hammer and that drives this piece down into the, you put the uh, the lug in here and that drives that down and sandwiches the wires inside the uh, the cable and uh, keeps the connection secure. Now that I got the three inverter runs crimped, I'm going to be using this heat gun to heat up this uh, heat shrink to seal off these exposed bits of copper here. And when you're when you're doing this step, you want to make sure that the heat gun is on the lower heat setting. Most heat guns have two heat settings. Uh, one's around 700 degrees and one's 1200, 1300 degrees. Uh, the 1200 degree one will melt this plastic and like burn it. Uh, both this plastic and usually the insulation of the wire. So you just want to use the lower setting. Alright, so here's the finished product with the three AC phases going from the inverter to the motor. Um, and it looks pretty good.